And we are back with the final round of Day 2 Swiss here at the Memphis TCG Regional. I am your host, Jeffrey Saran Rap Saran. And I am your other host, John Kettler. And we've got not quite a mirror, but a couple interesting decks we've seen before. A uh, little bit of a pseudo mirror going on. A little bit of a pseudo mirror here, and it's going to be very interesting here. And to please, to, to note, this is a win and end situation. Both players sitting very sweetly at 30 points, needing to get to that magical 32, 33 number. So a win here solidifies their top eight placement. That's right. So when we're nearing the ending rounds of a tournament like this, we're finally getting to the point where we've chosen our top eight players out of nearly 800 in the Masters Division. At that point, they're really trying to do the math, trying to figure out exactly how many points they need. When wins give you three points, ties give you one, and losses give you zero. So figuring out exactly what gets you in, whether it's an intentional draw or having to play, both these players have to play, and one of them has to win in order to be able to advance to top eight. So we are going to start sliding over to the match right now. This is going to be Mark Sparks piloting a Zorwark Lycanroc GX deck and on the outside as we featured earlier in day one. That Buzzwool Lycanroc deck. And it looks like we're going to be starting off our Mark's turn with the Nest Ball. That's right. And so Mark's going through the motion here, searching his deck, trying to figure out exactly what he needs, figuring out what his prizes are. And it looks like he is eyeing to get that Zerua in a little bit. Zuru going to come down here. I'm just going doing a quick little inventory check to see what all he has prized here. There is one thing to note as I was skimming through the list here uh, between both players here. Typically with these Zorak decks, because of how much fighting cards out there, that you would see one or two weakness policy in their list. However, Mark has gone through 13 rounds of Pokemon with zero weakness policy. So I'm curious how that's going to favor for him in this matchup. Yeah, I mean, I'm a little curious about that as well. Uh, what, what do you think? How do you think it's going to actually play out? I, I don't, I don't know what, what's what's going to happen this far here. He's going to have to definitely probably put a little more emphasis yeah. on the rock roughs in Lycan Rock. He does play a four three line here, so maybe shorten up on the Zorg GX line and uh, maybe shorten up the Zorg GX line and go more on the Lycan Rock GX approach. That's right, and let's go ahead and pause you for a second. So we just finished up with a great ball search. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. And now we've got a judge on the first turn. Supporter card, you only play one supporter per turn. Both players shuffling their hands back into their decks and drawing four each. And it, at this point, it looks like it could be pretty disruptive for... Alex in particular. It, it could be, but at the same time, we do already see an Oranguru bench down there. So he plays the one Oranguru there. We do see a lot of these Marshadow let loose judge type effects happen. So you want to do that little preventative maintenance and try to get that as soon as possible and opting to put it straight down the bench versus holding it in his hand here. Uh, just want to reiterate here that this is, out of the matches currently present, uh, or, or any, remaining in day two, this is the only true win and end situation here. And looks like we don't have too much going on here. We've got a nest ball. Already went through the big motions of figuring out what's prized and what's not. Searching his deck for another Zerua. Getting two Zerua into play. Not having as much vulnerability as far as the discards go. And looks like there isn't that much available in Mark's hand right now. Unless there's a supporter card hidden. Yeah, we do see like a Lycan Rock and, uh, and it might have been a supporter there as well. But we're passing over to Alex's side. Five cars, Beast Energy, already hand, plus Brooklyn Hill. We're definitely going to be see a really, really solid um, uh, uh, play here on Alex's side. Getting a Diancy. Going to be able to take a, the knockout, actually, on this active rock rough. 30 with the Beast Energy, 50, uh, sorry, 60. Then applying Diancy there. Yeah, and at this point, you're getting the same thing from Alex right now, searching his deck trying to figure out exactly what's prized but that one copy of Deancey Prism Star not prized adding that additional damage to all of his fighting Pokemon applying instant pressure right now and if he has that beast energy that might be a turn one knockout on the rock rough yeah but the beast energy and a one fighting in hand so we're going to attach one of those down be able to get a powerful instruct here for one. Oh, there goes the so beast energy and it's yep yeah, instruct for one it's coming out to what we we're saying reference earlier look at that right on <laughs> there you know make himself a little bit judged a little bit of let loose proof with that orangaroo and off the instruct to one cynthia here shuffle your hand draw six. Oh yeah for sure and getting that off the one card instruct so huge and starting the game with a beast energy even bigger it is a situation where we've got a whole bunch of things stacking on top of each other and the odds here while they're not too unlikely at the same time he's only allowed to run one copy of that beast energy one copy of that Deancey again they're prism stars so you can only have one copy and once it's discarded it goes to the lost zone removed 
forever for the purposes of that game. But they're not removed right now. They're right there, and they're dealing big damage. All right, so we do see the draw for six. Field blower energy. Um, looks like there's an Acer roll in there as well. Acrobite coming through. Option in between. What's that? Brooklyn Hill and Lycanroc GX. Ops to discard the Lycanroc GX. Once that Brooklyn there, just in case it gets discarded by Devoured Field. And Jet Punch, 30 to the active. And I don't know, what's the rule thing's going to put it down on? <laughs> <laughs> Can you say that one more time? What's the Rue thinks I put that 30 damage down on? Uh, well, I mean, I wish he was running, like, one random promo. That way he could damage the holographic <laughs> one and get that off the field. One Shining Legends. <laughs> one Shining Legends. One, one pro Black Star promo one. Oh, and with that Brooklyn Hill searching for the Rock Ruff, we're instantly replacing that knocked out Pokemon. But the momentum is going against Mark right now. Pure fighting versus quasi-fighting. Not a great spot to be in for Mark, but he's still got plenty of options. I mean, Zoro Lycanroc has a whole bunch of even matchups across the field. Not exactly sure if this would qualify, especially when we've got a turn one knockout from Alex to Mark. Yeah, unfortunately, without those weakness policies, there's not a lot of defense he could put uh, with the Zoraks there on the board there. So easily, these, these Zoraks can go down very, very fast with just some, you know, you know, jet punches even and, and anything along those lines there. So he's got to really play around that strategy here and, and work around that there. Hopefully get some more rock roughs out. That's right. And with the wonder tag, we can see a little bit more momentum going on for Mark's favor. Get those draw cards going. Cynthia, ever ubiquitous, ever common. Support a card letting you shuffle your hand back in and draw a fresh new six. So great when you're in these situations where you need to reset your hand. And once you get past the point of the first turn where Lily is drawing you eight cards, at this point, Cynthia seems to be a little bit better. And so we're getting rid of some of those cards that aren't quite advancing Mark's mm -hmm. board state. Absolutely there. So Cynthia here, shut your hand, draw six cards right now here. What else do you think Mark needs to do right now? Like, you know, we keep speaking about that weakness factor um, going against them uh, because of Alex's fighting side type deck. So how is he going to be able to pilot this matchup to a victory? He had to, he's had to have some kind of plan for these fighting decks. Right, right. And part of that plan may involve manipulating his damage in the right way, timing things in the right way, where while he's going to really struggle to actually get a one-hit knockout on any of these buzzwills. There are little things that he can do. Maybe at some point bring up and knock out that Deancey Prism Star. Obviously not this turn. Just trying to get a little bit of damage to set up that buzzwill for a knockout. But remember, this is something that was so important for Alex in the last time he was streamed, and it could apply here again. The fact that he runs two copies of Ace Arola, effectively negating a whole turn for Mark. So here's the interesting thing here also to note. He evolves um, the Zerua without damage. I mean, he promoted that one as well. So this is going to be a jet punch knockout to the Zerua on bench here. So well, as he stands right now, 30, 60 beast energy. He gets a choice spin, 90 plus Diancy. We could see a KO on the Oh, Zorky and there's the Ace Arola. The All that damage healed up, going right back through things again, getting a second turn knockout after a first turn knockout. Yep, yeah. right there on cube. But yeah. we're going to see the Beast Entry probably come back down, jet punching, doing severe damage to that Zork GX and taking the KO on the Zerua on bench. Critical hit, but there's no luck involved with that where we've got the Beast Energy and we've got the Deancey adding additional damage. The thing that I'm curious about, though, is whether or not he wants to push for additional damage because right now he's dealing 160 if he has a choice band then that could be very bad if he had the for choice, oh, Mark. Bloodthirsty oh, we've got, oh, oh, and we've got the Lycan Rock oh, with Bloodthirsty Eyes. And two, are we getting two knockouts? Yeah, it looks knockout. like we're getting 30, two knockouts. 60, yeah. 80, take out that Rock Ruff, 32 to Zerua on bench. And now Mark just <sighs> yeah. sitting there only riding this solo just with a Zorak GX. And the Lele is not doing much right now. So we gotta we got to figure out something here on Mark's side. Playing that Brooklyn Hill as Stadiums plays on both ends and grabs a Rock Ruff and attack, brings it to the bench. I mean, I, I don't know, man. I mean, uh, the, maybe the one saving grace for Mark right now is that Alex's field is only a single energy. But even if he's making some sort of amazing come from behind win, we've got to remember that Alex has energy acceleration. He has two beast ring yeah. that can be triggered at any point once those two prizes or even three prizes are drawn. And we see a little accidental flip of a card there, but didn't reveal it, just landed on the board. No harm, no foul. Got to be careful, though, when you're holding your hand and flipping your hand around at times. A lot of players do that just as a habit. And 
we notice a immediate shift in Alex's part. He's putting his he put his hand down, just kind of chilled out a little bit. Yeah, uh, this is a very interesting spot right now, but he does consider to go with such a deck using Wonder Tag to grab a Judge and go ahead and opt to play that right now. Alex does not have a Macargo out just yet to work that combo between Smooth Over and Instruct. Uh, so opting to play the Judge and hopefully put a little halter in Alex's set setup right now in an advanced mark state. Yeah, now Alex's setup for a turn two is just obscene right now. I mean, it, about the only thing that could have been better for him is if he had a turn to McCargo. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing just about. Oh, and maybe one more attachment. But, I mean, at any rate, he didn't miss an attachment technically since he yep. ace a roll it and just attached Beast twice. But and with the Devoured Field going on, we've got a little bit more damage potential from Mark here. But still not a whole lot going on. Maybe giving it a good solid try for the next turn or two, but I'd almost consider just packing up and going on in the game too uh, soon. I, I fully agree there. I think we see uh, looks like Fighting Energy, uh, Guzma, Cynthia. That might be a choice man to far left here, but regardless, this judge still brought up to another supporter, and now he's setting up oh, uh, like a rock G. But he decided not to play it there. So quick little, uh, quick little maths right here. So we've got our 60 base, our, our 30 base, our 60 with the Beast, are 20 with the Deancey, mm -hmm. we're dealing a clean 160. So unless my eyes were deceiving me, I think I saw that there was a choice band in Alex's hand and he decided not to play it and not to attempt to go for a knockout there. Yeah, it may have been a choice band, it may have been a, uh, you know, a different item that yeah. carded there that kind of mirrors it a little bit there. Little so, bit, yeah. uh, so Oh, and with the Macargo, though, he's got plenty of options here, assuming he can play more cards down. From his yeah, hand. with five cards in hand, it's going to be a little tough there. It doesn't have any Ultra Balls to narrow that down. Uh, however, looking fairly strong now. Going to yeah. probably do a smooth over now and set up his next turn, uh, potentially grabbing... Uh, either another uh, Buzzwell GX or actually probably even a Fighting Energy to have the Sledgehammer turn uh, the following. Yeah, and it looks like a lot of the cards in Alex's hand are unplayable right now. Again, he's got a full bench. He's already attached for the turn to the Lycanroc GX. But that's okay. I mean, this is a recurring theme throughout the whole tournament where if a player has Macargo and they can't get instant satisfaction from being able to draw whatever they just smoothed over for they can still set themselves up for the next turn it just requires a little bit more foresight and careful play absolutely there uh so gonna see just a jet punch 30 60 80 160 coming down on the zorg gx and blind that 30 pressure to the rock rough setting up some easier knockouts when that like a rock gx if it does come to play mm -hmm. Pass over to Mark's side after the attack draws the turn in so we see like devoured field i'm gonna trade that away also has dc and fighting in hand uh, and right there on Q, he does get the Lycanroc GX off of that trade, as well as an Ultra Ball. That's right, and you were just talking about Lycanroc going down. It's going down, and I actually feel pretty good about this play. It seems like he's going to go a little more aggressive here, using the GX attack much quicker. A good line of play because he's able to deprive Alex of his own Dangerous Rogue GX. Mm-hmm being able to deal maximum damage. And it is the maximum because we've got five bench Pokemon for Alex, but that beast energy, pardon me, my that beast ring, that beast energy is in the, no, it isn't. It isn't in the loss, and it's still there, but that beast ring is going to come into play. We have Alex having set himself up for this turn, Ultra Ball digging for an additional Pokemon. We've got that Orin Guru coming into effect too. So oh, yeah, we're definitely going to Lots of combos right here. Definitely going to be seeing that. Um, Beast Ring coming down here soon, shortly, and being able to attach to set up a Knuckle Impact here um, to take a KO. Actually, probably going to absorb some GX, actually, for exactly 200. Uh, 120, 150, uh, just short for an absorption yeah. GX well, there, so we need a, cho a choice band. Uh, but we'll see what he gets off the smooth over right now. Buzz will instruct for one to get the Ace Oh, and the Ace Arola <laughs> chains back again. And, and going to get the mind. Sledgehammer turn 30, 90, 120, 150. So he just needs a choice span right now for a knockout. On oh, he had the 30 earlier from the right. jet punch. That's right. And so with that, with with 170, wow. clean hit. There is there is going to be no response right now on Mark's side right now. I'm not sure what else he could gravitate to even, you know, get to to bring himself back to this game. Alex down to just one prize left in the game. That's right. And on Alex's side, I'm feeling pretty good about being able to save my Beast Ring to charge up one of my GX Pokemon later because the only things that can get knocked out realistically on Alex's side are 
non-GX Pokemon. So Mark is only going to go up one more prize, and then Alex is like, okay, B-String win if he needs to, or considering how damaged Zorak GX is right now, he could go the simpler solution and just knock out the Zorak. But I like this little attempt right here to at least maybe attempt to engineer some sort of come from behind win by Coco spreading. What we might see, and I think that to be perfectly blunt with you guys, Alex probably just has everything and he's sitting on it. Yep. But the idea, maybe the logic behind this Coco flying flip spread is to get a little bit of damage, maybe set up that GX Pokemon for a knockout, get it knocked out, and then at that point just avoid B-String altogether. I mean, Alex is really just a retreat and energy away. And there's a yeah. the Guzma. Or the so yeah. right there on cue, we're going to game two. That rhyme, that was awesome. And Alex really on the front foot right now, pedal to the metal, was hitting all P's and Q's in that matchup, got everything he needed each turn, drawing the right car, setting up his plays in advance, was able to have that Ace Arola off the smooth over to be able to get that KO crucial, crucial there on that Lycoron GX. That was set up even earlier in the game. That's right, and not only one Ace roll, but two. That's the special thing about Alex's list relative to some of the others I've seen is that he was able to take advantage of that not just once but twice and the insane part of that was having the beast energy on the first turn of the game so effectively he was able to exploit that extra damage to maximum effect yep. being able to get damage spread on the board and at the same time never really giving up any unnecessary knockouts absolutely there so Alex winner game one drew blazing Mark, what is he going to have to do here to be able to mark, uh, mount this comeback during games two and three? Set up. Really, it just comes <laughs> down to that. Just set up. I mean, we didn't, like, we, yeah, we saw a couple things there. It looked okay at the beginning, but with those first turn knockouts, he's going to need a little bit better than that, where we've been talking about this over and over again. It might be a meme at this point where you have to get out multiples of your basic Pokemon. I mean, it's repetitive at sometimes, but it's true. But Mark has to take the extra little step further beyond that, where if you need normally two and you're expecting to get knocked out the first turn, mm -hmm. you need three of whatever you need. Oh, and we had the fist bump. I love the sportsmanship there. And so... So Coco start on Mark's side, Zuru on the bench, and we're going to see right off the top there. Great ball. Plays four count in there. Once mass consistency. I really love any Zorak decks, you know, to play high counts of Pokemon, and great ball being to be, uh, able to be fully uh -huh. utilized, grabbing that rock ruff. That little rock ruff ready to go and help out with some bloodthirsty eyes. Kind of a transition in a very strange, shocking way, but it is what it is, <laughs> and that's the name of the game where we've got bloodthirsty eyes versus bloodthirsty eyes. The question, though, is, are we going to actually get more of those Zeruas? And we see a little bit of shuffling of the hand. And a pass it right now. There wasn't much going on right now. I just saw, like, the Diancy and only a choice band. And the, not much of supporter-wise. But we've got an Ultra Ball from Alex, at least off that Acrobite. And then going to outside, Brooklyn Hill, Rice coming right down. Going to grab himself a Fighting-type Pokemon to the bench. Going to do an inventory check first. Uh, Alex looking to have another blazing start here at the start of Game 2. I don't know if we're going to have the same type of brokenly good, incredible start from Alex as the last game, but nevertheless, he has some options Oh, here. he has oh, beast, beast energy, energy again. again? He has beast energy what? again here in game what? two. Going to get this easy, easy knockout on his Tapu Koko and apply uh, pressure to the bench. Oh, gosh, it's going to be super easy right now. I, I mean, the incredible thing is, okay, so it's one knockout. It isn't. Oh, is that the Guzma? The Guzma it's the Guzma. <laughs> he has everything. We have literally a repeat oh, of the first game. All of the right cards again. The Rockruff knocked out, oh. not even threatening any damage with Dangerous Rogue GX. We've got Zoroark's just dealing little bits of damage. They're like, hi, I'm Zoroark. I'm going to go ahead and just little, like punch you. I'm going to do a little light punch, but nothing really <laughs> significant, you know? It's like, what are two shots right now in the face of two Ace Arola? Oh, man. This is a well, you know, Guzma out there. He probably had the option to even play a Cynthia, but opts to take the KO on the Rock Ruff. The only true threat on Mark's side of the field. He doesn't want to bring up any Zorks to attack, but a and Rock Ruff, however. He had an uh, interesting little thing about the evolution. So he just... Okay, so that, that was a little strange. So he saw a switch there from which Zorak was being involved. Uh, speculation here, but it looks like he was at first dedicating to the healthy one, kind of catching it maybe as a mistake, and then Alex was like, you know what, that's okay. Go ahead and take it back. Great ball coming out again. Look, top seven cards, your deck. Find a Pokemon there. We see Lele. Anything else coming through? Oh, and a Zork GX. Zork GX. 
uh, tough choice here on what to grab. Does he have a supporter? Does he not? Does he want to power through in the form of trade? How does he want to find his cards? Well, with the prize exchange the way that it is right now, he does not want to allow what happened last game. He doesn't want to allow an easy knockout on a Zerua, which might have been indicated a bit by that switch of the evolution on the Zoroark. We might see another Zoroark go down because at some point those are going to be knocked out, maybe forcing forcing a GX knockout, so forcing Alex to knock out three big Pokemon. See that choice band on the Zoroark GX, dedicating that to a potential knockout later on. Yep, choice band coming down. Use, you know, going through, seeing if it was worth putting down on the Coco to maybe set up a spread damage there with through the choice band. However, I'll put it on a Zorak GX and play Cynthia to draw a fresh six cars. Lily, Kakui, Nest Ball, Lycanroc GX, Ultra Ball, and Zerua. Thank and you very much, Mark, for that friendly service there to help us out here <laughs> in the booth. Not, not a whole lot of double colorless energy there, though. Oh, but yes. <laughs> couple rock rough and so we've got that preemptive play going on where he wants to be able to threaten a potential knockout but I don't think I saw any energy at all in Mark's hand we've I yeah, just was rock rough earlier. so bloodthirsty eyes yeah, not gonna be able to come to effect here and just a pass yeah. over to Alex's side we see uh ultra ball but cargo ultra ball going to the bin and tap, oh no, Bloodthirsty Eyes, like a rock, and we're gonna see uh, Brooklyn Hill to grab an additional rock ref. That's right, and setting so, himself up not just for the one Bloodthirsty Eyes, but an additional, and let's see. Actually, no, just double checking Alex's, so it looks like he runs two different rarities of the same Lycanroc GX, so. Actually, a nifty little thing right there. It uh, makes it a bit <laughs> easier to figure out Wow, uh, he has no hand right now, and he's just going all in. I just taking yep. a, taking an aggressive approach, knocking out a rough, rock rough, and actually putting that Zorak GX within jet punch range now off of that 32. It. That's right. Not even have to play choice band or anything like that. Just a good clean knockout there, and taking a look at how Mark can respond. He's got his own bloodthirsty eyes going down for. Let's see the rock rough for. Maybe a little chip away prize, maybe an attempt at spread. The Kukui sitting there, though, as a potential alternative to maybe getting into KO range. Kukui uh, still has out outs to trade, um, so we need to uh, we need to try to get these DCEs right now, uh, and hopefully, you know, really get rolling here. The ops to not bench the other Zorua here, um, and it looks like he might be out of rock rubs because you Brooklyn Hill and did not bench it, or might be holding it for later on. And with not too many options right here, I mean, I'm struggling to see exactly the path to victory for Mark. And like you were saying earlier, no weakness policy is a pretty rough situation for our friend to the right versus our friend to the left. So with some draw power, we might see a window of opportunity. Maybe that Coco could be the path to victory. But just like last game, we have the looming threat of Beast Ring. But saving grace... Alex only runs two copies of it, and he pitched that McCargo very, very quickly, indicating to me that that Slugma might not show up for a while. Oh, we do see a Nest Ball now. Uh, well, trade, he traded the Nest Ball and got another Nest Ball. Devour Field and Fly Flip going to be the attack of choice here for Mark, trying to set up and develop more board state here going forward. It was, I think it was an Acerola and Fighting Energy off of that last trade. And, yep, Fly Flip. Spread the love all yeah. across the board. Yeah, but at the same Guzma time. Guzma off the top oh deck. Oh, gosh. Guzma <laughs> off the top deck. He almost got had an ex accidental third oh, draw between card. Between Brooklyn and Fighting it. Energy right now. Oh, yeah. man. But even hitting the Guzma off the top deck. I know. That is the, that is not who, who fair. Who needs McCargo when you just you get, just it get off everything you need? Deck. Yeah. That's okay. When you're in top deck mode, he has not played any type of draw supporter yet. He is just going through the motions, having every piece he needs. Although he is his only card. I think I saw a copy of one of the most recent rarities of Lily. So, well, yep, he, Lily. So he's got a little bit of support. Uh, two Lilies and a baby buzz That's now. right. And so he's basically within a, a single knockout of winning this game if he plays it just right and draws into it just right. But, hey, that Guzma top deck, that might actually have a little bit of a – TikTok effect, a little bit of a pendulum swing there where he got the Guzma, luckily for him. But 
his odds of getting a Guzma or a Lycanroc to follow up are going to go a little bit down because of that. So yep. he's going to really rely on hitting that second Bloodthirsty Eyes. Yeah, this is a very tough spot, spot to be in for Mark. Trying to leverage some kind of comeback right now. Um, opting to attach a fighting energy to Lycanroc GX. Uh, man. And, you know, Alex still has access to Lily his next turn. So you still could get these last few pieces to maybe take this final prize uh, in some shape or form uh, and you for know, his next turn. One thing that we haven't had much of an opportunity to expound upon in this game is that Mark runs a very disruptive version of Zorark Lycanroc where he runs four copies of Judge. Now, if we're looking for some sort of saving grace, some sort of hope for Mark, it's going to be in Hand Disruptor. There's no question in my mind it's going to be about that because getting little bits of damage, trying to set up threats, hoping that Alex does not get the Bloodthirsty Eyes to counter him, not get the way to get out of the active position. Uh, although, actually, to be fair, it looks like it would take a little bit more work for Alex to score a knockout this turn. He'd probably have to get pretty lucky. All right, so we had an energy attachment to the active rock rough. Lily here, four or five cards, also benching the baby buzz. Field blower taking away that devoured field and hard retreat, and we're going to do another jet punch hard here. Retreat, KO, yeah. this, KO this Tapu Coco and apply pressure to probably that Lycanroc GX. Yeah, I mean, the Lycanroc GX is his only hope, so while we aren't getting the GX knockout this turn, we are getting a knockout that's forcing Mark into a really desperate position where any of his non-GX Pokemon, if they get knocked out, he's going to lose. So he has to be really careful about how he benches things. He's oh, be yeah, the pressure right now. Even though, Yeah, you can't bench right now. Nope. The Lycanroc's Intimidate is staring down a Dangerous Rogue. And, and it looks like he has a Judge in his hand. Eddie plays the Judge, getting that little bit of disruption going on. And Alex is like, well, I mean, my draw's been pretty good this game. Let's go ahead and keep it going. Uh, at this point... With so many outs to win, Alex is in a commanding position, but I like Mark's grittiness here. I like that he's actually giving this the best possible shot that he can yes. because he knows this is a win and in, and you got to have the grit to be able to continue on. If he even gets if choice spin fighting energy, that might be game, and I think he has it. So we got that trade going on. Uh, we'll got still a see that. Hard to see. Dangerous the Rogue knockout brings out the baby buzz. The we got four prizes. Yep, oh, there it is. He's got the knockout. Right Doesn't there even matter. Cube. Does not even matter that the Beast Energy did not go into the loss zone. He's like, eh, the game's over anyways. Let's just go ahead and get that sledgehammer, get that win, move on to top eight. We are locked in now. Alex Kreckler coming in hot, bringing in this buzz rock, Macargo deck, getting everything he needs, both matches there. He even set up Macargo to second game. I know. The odds of being able to get back-to-back -back games of Beast Energy, Deancey, Guzma up, a Rock Ruff, yes. it hurt. like it's just phenomenal. It's right? A, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just crazy. That, the consistency that that deck has been playing for him all weekend long, merited him a, a placement in the top eight, shows the power, the power I, I don't know of if that I use, deck. For draws like that, I don't know if I use the word consistency. Like, <laughs> but, I mean, maybe if you ran, like, four energy lotto and things like that. Yeah. Eh, maybe, but you know what? I mean, like, he's played really well. He's taken advantage of the opportunities given yes. to him, and he's done a great job. We've seen it two times now, ju not just in this match, but in a previous match yesterday where he's been on stream, keeping up the confidence, bringing up the Pokemon that he needs to, applying the pressure to his opponents that he needed to, and overall just doing an excellent job to get to this point. It's been a really grindy long day for all of these players so yep. we have Alex Crackler in the top eight we have Gustavo Wada in the top eight and a couple of players we might not be sure about we know Grant Manley he's locked into yeah I, th I think there's a few other players that are locked in uh what we could do right now we can do we'll take a brief second here do an interview with the winner they're locked in a spot and then maybe do another brief a little intercession after that to go yeah. over who we feel is locked in we'll be right back with you here with Alex Crackler see you in a bit And we're back with round 14 winner, Alex Krekler, Krekler with his Buzz Rock Macargo deck, solidifying a spot in top eight. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling amazing. This is, uh, last regionals I played in was Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Did not win a single game. That, that yeah, a complete turn of events yeah. for you right there, definitely there. Exactly. So let's, let's go through the motions here. You know, you're, you're sitting down. Do you know what he's playing prior to sitting down? 
I, I knew what he was playing, yeah. So uh, we're going through Zork, like a rock. What's the strategy here for you? What was your thoughts going into this matchup? Go as fast as I can, kill all the, as many babies as I can, and just win the pie trade. And, and it looked like it worked really well for you there. Right off the bat, was able to have the beast energy one. Both games yeah. one and two, right in the opening hand. Get those rock roofs down and able to blood their CIs and Guzma right back to back those rock roofs there. Um, interesting enough, we were looking through Mark's list there and we saw we didn't play any weakness policy there. At what point did you may have noticed that? Or maybe you already know that ahead of time. I didn't know that ahead of time. I kind of figured it out when he, he wasn't playing like he had it. He was being kind of conservative, never trying to get to one. So I figured he didn't have it and. That just made the game even easier for me. Absolutely there. And we saw there, well, you know, game one, you know, you got everything. Got the cargo set up, able to get the pieces flowing there. Yeah. Slide in game two, however, you may have not been drawing, you know, the best supporters. However, yeah. you were getting the Guzmas, you were right. getting the Bloodthirsty Eyes. So what's going through your mind at this point as far as should you take the aggressive route versus see, a conservative approach? See, this In this kind of matchup, I always try and go aggressive as I can because if I go conservative and they start getting the things, I'm not going to be able to come back. Mm -hmm. If they can get all, all the Lycanox and all the energy down. So I got to go aggressive and just hope I get to my Guzmas and my everything I need. Absolutely, absolutely. So locked in top eight. I think yeah. we see Gustavo for sure, who no. is a Malamar variant. How do you feel going up against potentially a Malamar variant in top eight? I faced six Malamars in this event. I've only lost the two, so I don't want to see them, but I can beat them. I know that. Okay, and what's, what's the kind of like the thought process behind that? How do you approach that kind of uh, game? That matchup's mainly, I try and get them to, I can use by Baby Buzzwell's attack to do 120, mm -hmm. knock it all the Deoxys, and hope they don't get what they need. That's fair, that's fair. We Good luck to you. Thank Congrats you again, solidifying a top eight finish here at Memphis Regional. We'll be right, right back with you with some coverage with John and Kirk to bring you what we think may be here in top eight. We'll be right back with you.